welcome to the 19th annual group edition of Hydrogen and Fuel Cells. Uh, this is the last discussion of the day, so I invite everyone who's in the aisles to come and take a seat and enjoy a coffee or a tea, a refreshment, and uh, listen to our discussion. Uh, is, is the leadership in fuel cell components supporting market commercialization? Uh, please welcome to the stage um, Director of Global Business Development, uh, Mr. Brian Cheadle of Dana Holding Corporation. Hi, welcome Hi. to the stage. Thanks, Roxanne. So wow. first, why don't we start with a uh, brief dis uh, introduction of uh, Dana Holding Corporation and uh, your participation in the fuel cell industry. Sure. Um, Dana is a large multinational automotive parts manufacturing company. Um, we, uh, although headquartered in the U.S., we operate in 26 different countries. Uh, we have 15 technical centers that we support the development of new products. And um, our traditional products would include things like axles, drive shafts, cam covers, head gaskets, heat exchangers. Um, and in our traditional business, we're constantly uh, developing new products. Uh, there are technology changes to meet um, the needs of improved fuel economy or emissions reduction, so we're constantly developing these new products. Um, so that uh, kind of supports our business. Perfect. So why is Dana at Hanover? Uh, you, what, what brought you from internal combustion engines to um, fuel cells? Well, this in fact is our 10th consecutive year here at Hanover. Um, uh, it just kind of represents the time period, actually a bit longer than that, we've been working in fuel cells. Um, we see the fuel cell market as a bigger technology shift than uh, most of our traditional business involves. Uh, but that technology shift represents big opportunities for market growth and product growth. So we've uh, applied our same expertise in manufacturing and design to uh, come up with fuel cell components. So it seems that you've been here for quite a, quite a long time. So uh, what year is this for you to be participating at oh, Hanover? This is our 10th year. We started here in 2004 and have been here every year since. Um, what components uh, for fuel cells um, are you talking about? Are these future products or products that are available today? Well, a little of both. Um, we are focusing on components that leverage our capabilities. So we're focusing on bipolar plates, dot components, um, balance of plant components and hydrogen reformers. Those are our product focus areas. Uh, now, does Dana only supply fuel cell parts to the automotive market? Uh, no, we, are, we have targeted, in fact, four different market segments. Um, not only automotive, but industrial mobility, small stationary, and auxiliary power. Uh, can you tell me a little bit more about uh, these fuel cell component and products? Um, what do you have with you at your exhibit this year? And uh, what samples uh, do you want to discuss? Okay, this year at our, at our booth, we have um, a fuel cell module that is uh, produced by a French company called Symbio F-Cell. This is a five kilowatt PEM fuel cell. Um, and we are delighted to be uh, um, Symbio F-Cell supplier of the metal bipolar plates that are in that product. Uh, actually, metal bipolar plates uh, are in the news because just today Dana re uh, issued a press release uh, announcing that we are, uh, we think we're the first company in the world in serial production of metal bipolar plates. Um, so these are being used in a number of applications. Okay. Uh, so it seems that uh, these components are already um, in market adoption. So can you provide some examples of uh, this commercialization? Sure. Um, well, today we are supplying um, composite bipolar plates. These are molded graphite loaded plates for uh, telecommunications applications. Um, the telecommunications uh, industry is supporting uh, an explosive growth in cell phones. And cell phones need cell phone towers. Cell phone towers need backup power. Um, so fuel cells are finding um, a, a niche application, well, more than a niche, a, a, actually a growing application to displace batteries. Uh, or to complement batteries uh, for um, extended runtime and uh, similarity uh, to uh, emissions reduction and noise abatement uh, 
from diesel genset backup power. Okay. Um, are there any questions from the audience at all regarding um, anything to do with the Anon? Uh, no? All right. I did bring a couple of samples here. Um, right. I'd like to speak a little bit to how we develop new products. Sure. Um, in our traditional products, uh, here's an example of a battery cooler for an uh, electric vehicle. Uh, this is a product that didn't, didn't exist four or five years ago, and that's in our traditional business. This is an example of a metal bipolar plate, um, and this is obviously a product that we have a lot of uh, expectations for. Uh, it really is going to be the product of choice for automotive applications because the metal bipolar plates allows very high power densities and the potential for low cost uh, when we get to high volumes. Um, so how do you deliver these innovations to provide value to your customers? Well, Dana operates uh, uh, technical centers, and four of them, uh, we have dedicated fuel cell engineers. They're located on three continents, so we can interface directly with our customers wherever they are. Um, we then uh, select customers with targeted commercialization plans, and we collaborate with them to develop the component products that they are going to need to uh, work in their systems. And by working with them collaboratively, we can help them improve the performance of their system, the reliability of their system, we can simplify the product, we can integrate things, um, and of course we apply our manufacturing expertise to design for manufacturability, which means we ultimately deliver uh, high performance, reliability, and lowest net cost. And uh, that's the way we work with our customers. And uh, that cooperation or collaboration is key to achieving innovation, uh, timely delivery of new products, and um, low-cost products, ultimately. Okay. So where do you see? Oh, we have a question over here. Thank you. Theo Holton, Green Hydrogen Consulting. I would like to ask, uh, you mentioned cost. Um, where do you see the cost for fuel cells going in the coming years? Well, it has to go down, um, and of course it varies by market segment. Uh, the automotive segment, of course, has very, uh, very discrete cost targets, <clears throat> and um, we know that the, the automotive companies are now publicly announced uh, that they will be introducing fuel cell vehicles by 2017, and um, uh, to do that, we must meet certain cost targets. I mean, we being them, the OEMs, and we, their suppliers. Uh, we are already working together, obviously, to meet a, a five-year type implementation pl plan. Do you have any other more questions? Right I'm not sure I've answered your question very directly. <laughs> um, in terms of um, component costs, the, as you probably know, the US DOE try to set target costs that represent the OEM interests. And those are not a bad guideline, but um, the OEMs will have their own versions of those. Yes, I'd like to follow on to this question. Um, you're saying the costs have to come down. Sorry. Yeah. Where, ah, sorry. sorry. Yeah. Um, I'd like to follow on to that, because you're saying the cost has to come down. But as we saw with electric vehicles, the OEMs in the automotive industry could not get enough volumes to bring the price down to make them viable. Um, I see the same situation with fuel cells. <coughs> there will be a few demonstration models or novelty models, but not in the volumes which will be required to bring the price down. Mm. Well, it, um, it does depend <coughs> on the component. Um, in, a, in a component like a bipolar plate, there's a lot of them in each engine. So even in relatively low market penetration of fuel cell vehicles, there are pretty significant volumes of these required. So in the case of that product, excuse me a sec. In the case of that product, we can make, we can look at and make um, investments in capital and manufacturing processes and material improvements that will let us get the cost targets down in a fairly predictable way. Um, in other components, say the balance of plant component where you have only a few on each vehicle, 
uh, we need to take a different approach. There we look for more standardization of components so that we can sell the same component to many different customers. And that way we get the volume up, not as fast obviously as something like a bipolar plate, but we get more volume than we otherwise could to help enable that early phase of the production. And once we get some market turnover happening, uh, usually there's a, then a rapid follow-on. Do we have any more questions from the audience for Brian? No? Oh. Do you think the free market is sufficient to bring about uh, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles uh, on a large scale, though? I mean, um, addressing this point of, of scale and numbers, do you think there's an argument that government ought to intercede and provide some incentives for green hydrogen <coughs> transport um, on a large scale? You know, it could be uh, for use in government vehicle re requirement for government re vehicles, for instance, or, or other mechanisms. Um, because at the moment, um, obviously, battery electric has the advantage that anyone can plug in, but hydrogen transport is being held by, back by the fact that there's not uh, the infrastructure in this vicious circle. So really what we need is uh, large numbers of uh, hydrogen vehicles to be deployed alongside hydrogen infrastructure yep. in virtuous circles, and then that will assist further deployment. Mm -hmm. Um, my own opinion is that yes, the government does have an important enabling role in the, in the early stages of any market um, development and adoption. Um, in, the, in the case of automobiles, obviously the hydrogen infrastructure uh, is something that the governments uh, can play a strong role in, in, in encouraging because the car companies themselves can't do it. Uh, it'll, it'll really take the cooperative efforts of the car companies, the fuel suppliers or you know, hydrogen suppliers ultimately and the, and the government to get it kick-started. Um, even in battery vehicles, uh, governments have taken some, some role in encouraging um, uh, plug-in, recharging, uh, anticipating that urban cars, for example, will need places to plug in in the city, not just in one's home. Uh, there is some encouragement of that until the point where everybody figures out how they can make money and then it will become self-sustaining. All right, I think that brings us to, to the end. Unless is there any more questions in the audience here? Cool. Well, thank you for joining me on the uh, Thanks table for the here. Pleasure. Sure. Uh,